Hey kids, Mr. Flaw here, hope you're well. Out and about on a beautiful day on the big old BMW R1250 RS. A beautiful sports touring bike, and one that many people say is the bike that uh, people actually bought the GS. Should have actually bought. If you don't go off-road on your GS, why would you have one of those instead of one of these? Well, in this video, stick around and stay tuned. I'll give you my thoughts on the R1250 RS versus the R1250 GS. So the R1250 RS, a beautiful bike, out in 2019. All the usual BMW lovelies on it, including the lovely new TFT screen, all the electronics you can shake a stick at, the integrated sat-nav with the whiz wheel, the same switch gear as on the uh, GS, the same 1250 shift cam engine now as well. An awful lot of similar stuff to the uh, GS, all of which is great stuff and stuff that I love on BMWs. So given all that, why would you, uh, if you never go off-road, why would you have a GS over one of these? Does it make any sense? Well, I suppose the first thing that comes to mind is there is a bit of a thing, isn't there? Lots of people just don't like the GS because it is so popular. To me, it seems a ridiculous argument. It's popular for a good reason. That is that it's a very good bike. But if you think the GS is just super ubiquitous and you just don't want to go down that GS family, but you still like the sorts of things that it offers, then of course, then the RS makes complete and utter sense. It's got the uh, almost sports bike looks Although, of course, it is a sports tourer, so it doesn't look anything like the GS, at least not from the front. The rear third is very similar. And this, so happens, this is the exclusive model I'm riding, but also it is a more exclusive bike, and that you just don't see so many of these on the road. So if you're the sort of person that doesn't like to follow the crowd, then the RS is probably the bike for you to have. One advantage uh, I've noticed of the GS over the RS is the fact that its seating position it's a little bit roomier. Very comfortable here on the RS, but you are leaning forward a little bit and your legs are a little bit tucked up in a sportier position. It's fine for me, I'm just a short fella. But uh, on the GS, you are sat a bit more upright and your legs are a bit straighter. If you're a taller person, you're gonna find the GS more comfortable, particularly on longer rides. That may be a reason why you'd have the GS over the RS. Certainly worth factoring in. Well, I've ridden uh, both the RS and the GS extensively and got to know both, both bikes pretty well. And both bikes actually, because the Boxer engine have a very low centre of gravity and that makes two heavy bikes much easier to man manoeuvre around than you'd think they have any right to, ha to be. You can shift them around on your driveway easier than you'd expect bikes that weigh more than 200 kilograms to be able to do. And that is also reflected in the handling. Both bikes handle really well. I would argue the RS handles better than the GS. So that's one reason. If you're into handling, you're into sports bike handling, then the RS is probably for you. But even though both bikes are unintimidating to ride, I find, and this is counterintuitive, on my driveway, the bigger, taller GS, I actually find easier to move around. As I mentioned, I'm only a short fella at five foot eight. So being able to move a bike around is quite important for me particularly as I own a number of bikes and I'm forever shifting them in and out of my garage. I found this bike, the RS, just a bit harder to move around. Weird that, because it does have the same engine, of course, and the low centre of gravity. I think it's to do with the fact that the handlebars are probably a little bit narrower and the handlebars are a little bit lower. On the GS, you've just got a bit more leverage to move it around. So for me as a smaller chap, I find the GS easier to move about. Counterintuitive, that one, but that's definitely the case. There may be a slight cost advantage of going for the uh, RS over the GS if it's really on a knife edge for you and to be honest it pretty much is for me I'm making this video as much for me as anyone just thinking it through to myself as when I come to replace my GS am I going to go for one of these or am I going to go for another GS or something else but another consideration to think about is the cost in that for a similarly spec RS I suspect you would save a little bit of money over the GS not a great deal in it very similar specifications, all the same sort of gadgetry as I mentioned as you can get on the GS, but a little bit cheaper on the RS perhaps. I guess another plus point of the GS over the RS is the fact that it has a bit more maybe road presence. I'm not saying this doesn't have great road presence on the RS, but the GS is sitting up a bit taller. I just think people can see you coming a bit better on the GS. Minor point, but I'm kind of clutching at straws here. And then of course the other advantage of the GS over the RS, if you ever are inclined to go off-road, do a green lane, 
or go on a proper round the world adventure and there might be some dirt tracks and so on to ride then the GS is built for that, it is an off-road bike although of course many of us don't ride them off-road I have ridden GS's off-road and it's extremely capable I just choose not to ride my own off-road because I don't want to drop it and damage it it's an expensive bike as I mentioned before but if you do like going off-road then the RS really is, uh, is not for you and that would be a reason to have the GS so what's my personal opinion then uh, on the RS versus the GS which will I go for? Well, as I mentioned, it very much is a difficult decision to make. It's, uh, there are pros and cons of both bikes, and there are many, many similarities. The, the bikes have got 85% similarities. It's only 15% of differences that you've got to think about. And as much as I like the RS, and I may change my mind in the future just for a change, but I think if I was buying a bike tomorrow, I'd probably go for the GS. It's just that little bit more comfortable and a little bit easier to move around. It's got all the same good bits as, in terms of the engine. It feels just as fast. May not look quite as nice, but for me, the comfort of the GS just nips it over the RS. So yeah, for me, even though I don't go off-road, I still have the GS over the RS at the moment, but it is a very narrow margin. Please don't hate me for that. Be really interested to see if you agree or disagree with me. Do leave me a note in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about uh, one versus the other and whether you think I've got that right, particularly if you've uh, ridden both bikes or owned one or other of the bikes. I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, video. If you've not been to my channel before, I don't just do bike reviews here on Listen and Flyer, but I do monthly bike news, I do uh, live streams every month, I do uh, things about how to look after your bike in the garage, maintenance, I do trips and tours at home and abroad, basically everything and everything about motorcycles, I love it all, I try and cover it here on the Pacific Fly. It'd be great to have you join me. If you haven't done so already, do hit that subscribe button. And that way I can see you on the next video. Until next time, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. Yeah, having now jumped off the RS is straight back onto the GS. Okay, this is mine, so it's an older model, but uh, in terms of seating position, this is exactly the same as the current R1250 GS. And I have to say, to me, this feels a lot more comfortable. I'm sitting way more upright. My arms are much wider. It just feels a nicer place to be. And as I'm using this primarily as a touring bike, yeah, for me, the GS wins over the RS.